Hi everyone, it's Michelle of MEW Designs and this video is all about sewing my new pattern, the Admiral Grace Tote. In particular, these side seams. They might look tricky, they're really not too difficult and I will take you through step by step how to sew them up. Starting with the side seams. For, for this, you'll need your side panels and your centre panel. One of the instructions in the pattern is about notching. I like using notching as a way of finding the centre as I feel it's a little bit more accurate to the piece as cut. So what you do for the side panel, fold those edges apart, find that centre and then with a sharp pair of scissors put a tiny little cut, one or two mils, it doesn't have to be big at all. Do the same on your side panel. So edges together find that centre and tiniest of little cut. So now you have the centre. I like to work from the centre first. You find the notch, you find this notch and match those two notches up. This is where I will put my first clip. Now I've got a few different sizes of clips so what I like to do is Normal size wonder clip, and then right beside it, two small clips. That seems to hold it together really well. Once I've done that centre, I then move up to the other end. Now, when you're matching these, the raw edge isn't where you need to focus on, it's actually where the stitch line's going to be. So, look in that one centimetre or one third of an inch and make sure that it meets on the top. I put one clip and then I like to put a second clip just to hold that in place. Right around to the other side and do the same thing. Just making sure that it's matching on the top here. One clip two clips. Now this is often the point. We start looking at a pattern thinking how do these two pieces possibly go together? Trust me, I double checked, they do. These straight edges towards the top, there's no ease, but when you get around the bottom you're going to find that this side panel piece almost puckers a little because again you're not matching those cut lines, you want it to be perfectly balanced at that one centimetre in where you're actually stitching because that's what shows. So on these side seams I just pop them together about two thirds of the way down. I'll do the same on the other. Not worrying about any ease, you just want them sitting snugly together. And then this that looks like extra fabric if you push the pattern out and flat you can see that there is no extra fabric at that stitch line so I like using smaller clips I actually clip at approximately one centimeter or three-eighths of an inch because then you're clipping where you're going to be sewing and I think that can really help too you just work it around Trying to keep it. So as you can see, it is, there's little bits of loose fabric in there, but that's exactly what you want because when you stitch at that one centimetre line, it will sit perfectly. I'm going to put my clips away. On my machine at the moment I am using a Keflog foot and a leather needle. I can actually zoom in. A slightly better view then. The Teflon foot leather needle, Rosant thread because that's what my machine likes. A walking foot is great for leather because it really helps the feed. There's the feed dogs underneath that pull that bottom layer through and with a walking foot it's feeding at the same time from the top 
Whereas relying on just the Teflon foot, I'm wanting that to glide while it's still being pulled underneath. And what you can risk is that bottom layer pulling and the top layer getting stuck. And that's why, particularly at the start of seams, sometimes you'll find that bottom layer is running away and the top layer is not moving. If you're really struggling with that on your machine, start a little bit further in, half a centimetre, even a centimetre in, stitch forward, then stitch backwards, because that way you're sandwiched a little bit further in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stitch this seam. My machine is a little bit loud and I like to go fast, so I may fast forward through this part. The seam allowance again is a centimetre or three eighths of an inch. to hold that and off we go. That is the side seam sewn together at one centimetre. We turn it the right sides out and just to double check. And what I like to do is actually sew a second line around and I flip the piece upside down to sew the second line so that way you've got bobbin and then top thread top thread and then bobbin and it also helps take a little bit of load off if you've ever noticed seams grinning where you can see the stitch line putting that second line in really helps and you're putting it in a pin width so as close as you can to the other line maybe a millimeter or two away so I'm going to go ahead and pop that line of stitching in now And that is my second row of stitching in. The next step, if you're doing the encased seam, is to trim this right back to as close to that stitching as you can. You don't want to go so close that your stitching is going to come undone, but you want to remove as much of this bulk as possible. You also want to cut at the top here to remove a lot of bulk because that will really help when top stitching. So rather than going through two layers there, if you trim it right back in where there are two layers, is only a tiniest little bit, makes hand wheeling it over a lot easier. I'm just going to trim that down. If you're making the bag out of fabric, it can pay at this point to run some fabric glue down this cut edge but as leather doesn't fray we don't need to worry about that here just be careful that you're not grabbing the layer underneath as you're cutting because that is heartbreaking when you accidentally cut a hole and try and keep it as even as possible all the way around So that's cut that down quite a bit. And what we're going to do is stitch just on the other side of where we've cut there. Once you've got that side seam trimmed nicely all the way around, you turn the right side out. You can see when you initially turn it, it's a little bit scrunchy. 
this is where you can work it with your fingers. Just roll it and get that edge looking really nice. And you'll notice when you're doing this that you can actually feel that cut edge. And this is going to tell you exactly where you need to sew. You don't want to sew through where there's four layers. You're going to come just inside and sew two layers, which is much easier for your machine. I like to work, particularly with leather, working it with your hands can really help it sit well. Just rolling that seam out. It takes a little bit of practice to get this technique looking, working right. And I know I'm probably making it look very easy, but I have had a lot of practice. But as you can see, it sits a lot smoother. And when it comes to sewing this seam, have a practice run on a scrap piece with your walking foot, if you're using one, and see how it goes. If it was fabric, you could use a zipper foot quite easily. And adjust that along particularly if you can move the position of your needle on your machine. Now, with my Juki, I can't move the needle. It's a straight stitch only. So the zipper foot that came with mine, I adjust the foot either side. I don't like using that. I tend to use a left and a right zipper foot. They're a little bit scary because the needle is right on the edge of the foot, so you do have to watch your fingers. And these aren't great for leather because they're metal. What I will be using is a Teflon zipper foot that has the needle hole right at the edge of the foot. If you are using these, one word of caution, they can actually scratch. So where that hole is for the needle, just make sure that it's not super sharp. I ended up needing to use a little bit of sandpaper on this. I also am going to leave quite long tails. My machine is likes to make a little bit of a bunch up at the start and end of seams. So by leaving the tails, it won't be doing that. Another trick is to measure down the five centimeters, washi tape or something that's not gonna react. A nice marker, so on one side, I will put it at the five centimeter mark and I will do the same thing on the other side you can also push a pin into the seam but I find that it always falls out on me remembering that with leather you don't want to do anything that marks so even the leather marking pens I'm sometimes hesitant to use just in case they do leave a residual mark so the other way is pushing a pin into the seam like that. So it's not actually going into the leather, it's held in between the stitching. But I like the tape, it's nice and bright, it's obvious. I'm gonna to remember to stop because it's there. I'll clear clips off my machine. So again, using stitch length of three, I find is quite good. You can use clips on this edge to hold it in place. But what I like to do is just sew a little bit at a time and then adjust as I move around and just stopping and starting and stopping and starting and adjusting as I go, taking your time, remembering to breathe. So I'm going to start just on this edge of tape and I'm gonna sew all the way around. With the zipper foot, I'm just going to sew just on the edge. So I'm only sewing through two layers and not the four. I'm not going to backstitch on this one. I'm going to use a needle to go back through, but you can backstitch once just to hold it in place. And slowly and keep adjusting as you go. Move the piece as you need to. Nice and slow round.
as you can see here I've got a nice big piece of tape to tell me to stop sewing needle up and leave a nice long tail and that is how you do the encased seam and what's really cool it's like a French seam on the inside you can't see any of those raw edges you can at the top though so now the last little step for me is I grab a needle if you've got any of the self threading needles they make this a lot easier now pull the tape off now in leather I actually put the eye of the needle through first I know that probably sounds really odd but I actually find it a lot easier because I don't want to puncture the needle I want to use the hole that's already there so this allows me to do that and then I'm just going to thread the needle it through to the other side I can now knot that off nicely and I'll do the same on the other side and as you can see by doing that extra row of stitching it actually changes the way that the bag sits you get this cool directional change at the bottom which is why I am really loving doing this technique on the Admiral Grace so I hope that's helped with any questions and made it just seem a little less scary and hopefully explained it to you. Thanks very much.